wish you all a blessed Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. This is our Christmas Eve worship from here in Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. I'm Pastor Christy Schub and Pastor David Schub. And together we are honored to share with you the joy of this evening. In the stillness before the dawn, we witness a birth. The humble birth opens our eyes to the wonder in the ordinary, the surprising presence of God in the common things of life. And so we sing, light candles and rejoice together. The gift of the holy child touches our hearts. The carols connect us to the ages, and the overwhelming love of God brings hope-filled tears to our eyes. The promised Messiah is born. A new Prince of Peace has come. Rejoice, for on this star bright holy night, the angels still sing. They bid us to seek the holy in the midst of the different and the ordinary. They call us to look into the eyes of a child and see God. They, they call, call us to trust God with, with what, what is begun, begun but not, not yet done. done. Let us pray as we light the Christmas candle. O loving God, you once caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of true light. Turn our thoughts toward Bethlehem and the Christ child. May the words of scripture remind us again that the old story is ever so new. May the carols reveal to us again the wonder and mystery of his birth. May the candle symbolize for us your son as the light of the world. May all who have known this mystery of that light on earth come to the full understanding of its joy in heaven. Amen. Amen.
We reflect on the Christmas gift in the words of Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our Christmas gospel comes from the second chapter of St. Luke. It begins at the first verse. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
visions, brighter visions beam afar. See the great desire of nations, you have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship. Christmas gospel continues in the second chapter of Luke, picking up at the eighth verse. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. traveled many moonless nights cold and weary with a baby inside and I wonder what I've done Holy Father you have come and chose
for the mercy of your plan. Help me be strong. Help me be. Help me. Breath of heaven, hold me together. On this most holy of nights, I wish each of you all of the blessings of Christmas. I understand that this is a very different Christmas for you. It's not a Christmas you would have imagined several years ago, nor is it one that you would have chosen. This Christmas follows a difficult year, a year of uncertainty and struggle, of suspicion and anger and hurt and pain. It's been a year of pandemic and political unrest. It's been a time where people have recognized that systems that they haven't thought about ever are broken and need to be fixed. There are problems that need to be addressed. And all of these things have come together to bring you to this day, a day that many of you may feel like you have been stripped of all of the celebrations and the rituals and the observances that have come to mean Christmas for you. But my prayer is that you open your hearts and you listen and you recognize more than ever that the gift of Christmas occurred in just such times as these. And that perhaps if we can possibly focus less on the feelings of what's been lost or what you aren't able to do, you will get a deeper glimmer of the true gift that we experienced that first Christmas. I'd invite you. Open your hearts, hear anew the readings that you've heard at every Christmas service for probably your whole life. Hear the words of the prophet Isaiah and recognize that they were spoken to a people who had long struggled with political unrest, with violence, 
and oppression, with uncertainty, with a culture and with an exile that had them wake up in a world so different than the one to which they were accustomed. But it was in those circumstances and to those people that Isaiah talked of the promised Messiah, the mighty counselor, the Prince of Peace. Humbly, I would also suggest that if you listen to my story with the ears of what real life looks like, you might be able to recognize the depth of this gift that surpasses the struggles of the day. History has been kind to me. I'm often portrayed as calm and serene and so strong of faith that none of the problems of the world or in my life rattled me at all. It was like straight ahead with obedience. But brothers and sisters, I was a person just like you. And I would more characterize my experience of that first Christmas and all the years that followed as spent living in what I've come to call an in-between time. But I certainly was not part of that first Christmas story under the best of circumstances. It was not the best of times. From a society standpoint, I was young and poor and female and pregnant, and it was pretty much well known that Joseph was not the father of my child. In my culture, that right there made me less of a person. I also lived in a place that was under an oppressive foreign military occupation. I lived in dangerous and uncertain political times. At any moment, there might be an uprising or an upheaval and innocent people suffered so often. Add to my societal situation, my personal situation, I had had to face the man that I loved, the man that I intended to spend my life with and tell him that I was pregnant, knowing that he knew darn well that it wasn't his child. Oh, I could speak of the angel and of God's call, but that didn't sound any more realistic in my day than it would in yours. But even when an angel visited Joseph and when Joseph accepted me and when we were in it together, then I had to watch as Joseph's friends made fun of him behind his back, called him a fool, for being manipulated, for being so, so ignorant. They laughed and they turned their backs on him. And then I watched as I too had friends who had known me since we were children shun me as someone who is unclean. I was uncertain, frightened, overwhelmed, and certainly out of control of what was going on. Add to all that the trip to Bethlehem, a hundred mile journey on foot and by donkey back in my third trimester only to arrive at Bethlehem to find no place 
to stay and have to deliver my child among livestock without my mother or sisters or family or, or anyone to help me face this new and overwhelming and frightening experience. I was so physically and emotionally and mentally exhausted that it was hard to believe that God could be a part of that. But at the same time, at the same time, on the other hand, the in-between time, on the other hand, I had always been a person of deep faith. And I had been blessed. God had sent an angel to me to say that I was to have the honor of caring for this child of God, this God made flesh who would change the world. I was the illustration that there is no time so dark and hopeless and there is no person so small and insignificant that God can't use them to be part of the plan to save all of creation. It was an incredible blessing. I lived my life in between wondering how God could be part of this thing that I could hardly believe and realizing that with God, nothing is impossible. And as I look back, that's pretty much how I spent my life with Jesus in that state of in-between. When I looked at him, I recognized that he was the gift, Emmanuel, that God was with us. In the hardest times, I knew if I listened, I was hearing God's voice. And yet I was also not a fool. As I watched him grow, as I remembered the words that the shepherds spoke and that the Magi spoke, that this was Emmanuel, this was the Messiah that was going to turn the world upside down. I was not so silly and ignorant to not realize that in order to do that, Jesus would make enemies of the people who enjoyed the way things were and didn't want the world turned upside down. So my life and my journey of faith is an illustration of what it looks like to be in an in-between time, a time when the world looks totally out of God's control, but in a world where you know that God is in control, that God is with us. Christmas is that way. Christmas is always that way. As every year, as you celebrate Christmas, you celebrate something that's happened. It was begun on that first Christmas but it's not yet done. It continues. It's the symbolism that you share every Christmas within the worship service itself. It's the symbolism that, that led to the tradition that Jesus was born at midnight, right? Just as things are the darkest, light breaks into the world. But dawn doesn't come like this. It's a slow breaking apart of the darkness and the light shining. At the end of these services, you light the candles and the light spreads. The lights just don't all come on. It's a process. And brothers and sisters, as you find yourself looking at your world today, wondering how can God be a part of this mess? How can we go forward from here? 
I want you to hold fast to that symbolism. The salvation has begun. Light broke into the world and turned that corner for all time to come. It's not done yet, but it's begun. Christmas reminds us that in a time of darkness, hope breaks in. It reminds us of Emmanuel, that God is with us, that God is working among us and through us to save us all. It's possible. It is possible for things to change, for things to get kinder, more just, more compassionate. It is possible for people to grow because with God, nothing is impossible. Experiencing the wonders, the joys, the parties, the laughter, the gathering that Christmas had come to mean so many years before this are wonderful gifts but they are not the best gift of all at Christmas. The gift of Christmas is not the absence of the pain or struggle or loss in this life, but it's the gift of God's love and constant presence with us. It's the gift of strength and new beginnings and new life. And it's the strength that comes from knowing that we are not walking alone and the power that can make anything possible is working in us and with us and through us. I played a part in God's entry into our world that first Christmas Eve, but now I invite you this year with so many things looking so dark. Sit with me for a while at the manger and recognize that you too are being called from here to go out into that world and help carry Christ into those situations now that so desperately need God's love and God's transformation. And now for all of you, may the peace and joy of Emmanuel that passes all understanding sustain you in the days and the years ahead. Amen.
Let us join together in the Christmas prayer. Loving God, deep in the night when all the world had locked the doors on love and closed the shutters on hope, you pierced the darkness with light and a baby's cry. Never again shall we be alone. No more shall we sit in fear. For Christ, the light of the world and of our lives is born. God of angels and babies, open us once again to this miracle, this wonder that you became one with us. Let the angels sing for us. Let the stars shine for us. Let the child smile at us here and now on this holy night. Amen. Amen.
Now let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and and ever. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with the ceremony of candle lighting. At this time, we're going to have to pass this as virtually the best that we can. Hopefully you have candles near you and that you are, if you are worshiping with family members, you all have a candle. The central candle on our Advent wreath is a symbol of Christ. We call it the Christ candle. All the other candles in the sanctuary have been lighted from it. As the ceremony begins, Dave and I will light our candles from the Christ candle. As this happens, there will be a time for you to light your candle at home. If you are worshiping with others, please pass that light from disciple to disciples until all candles are lit. Remember, each lighted candle is never tilted, but is always held upright when passing the light to another. You may light your candles. I am the light of the world. Let your light shine before all people. Glory to God in the highest heaven. And peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Let us pray. Almighty Almighty God, God, you you made made this this night shine shine with the beauty beauty of the the true light. light. Grant Grant that that on earth we we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence. And and in in the last day, wake wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together.
please raise your candles together. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a bowl. Instead, it is put on a lampstand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine before all people so that they will see the good, loving, and compassionate things you do and praise your Father in heaven. Let us pray. Strong and tender God, one candle can pierce the deepest darkness. One flickering light can kindle a new vision. One voice on fire can set our hearts ablaze. Passionate and gentle God, you are the source of light, and we are your many candles, each uniquely burning for you. Touch us, light us, Warm us, purify us. May a flame rise in us and burn bright in us this holy and fiery night. So let it be, in the name of Jesus, our newborn King. Amen. We celebrate Jesus' birth. Because of this birth, all life is touched by holy love. Let us go into the world cherishing the gift of God's love, made new with wonder in our hearts, with praise on our lips, and with hope and joy in our souls. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Yeah. 